Hi everyone, you should be able to see me now. Oh, how exciting. We are together for the February full moon ritual and we're live. Tonight is a full moon in Leo. Hopefully you can see me. If you have any problems seeing me or with the technology, let me know. But you should be able to see me and hear me really loud and clear. Just confirming my technology before we move forward. Bear with us just a second, everybody. I'm going to get started smudging while I'm waiting for, I'm waiting to see myself basically, which will just affirm that you can see me too, but hopefully you can. If you've already smudged, that's great. I've smudged the room that I'm in with about, gosh, I don't know how many people are here, but our, our room is full tonight. So, and I have a feeling our online room will be full too. Maybe it's something about the fact that we're talking about sex <laughs> that has a very full house. Okay. I can see myself. So hopefully you can see me too. Can everybody see me okay? Yay! Well, Jennifer says she sees me, so I'm just going to assume that everybody else sees me too. Yay! Okay, you can see me. Well, happy full moon, everybody, and happy full moon to everyone who's in the room. Um, if you haven't worked with me before, I'm the Sage Goddess, and I part of my mission in the world is to reinvigorate some of these ancient, ancient traditions with modern audiences. There aren't a lot of places in the world that you can go for full moon ritual. People don't do it anymore, but our ancestors did. And the full moon every month is a cause for celebration. It's a holiday. I look at it that way. I put extra makeup on, extra jewelry. I think about what I'm wearing. I'm very intentional. You know, what jewelry do I want to be wearing? What gemstones do I want to wear? What sign is the moon in? Does anybody know what sign the moon is in today? Yeah. Guess what sign I am. So, so here it is. I, ha I am not responsible for what happens here tonight. I will just tell you, when the moon is in my sign, uh, all bets are off. But let me say this, two little caveat, well, one caveat really before we get started. The people in the room, I don't have to worry about because there aren't small people here. I always tell you it's totally fine for you to bring your kids to Full Moon Ritual. Tonight we're going to be talking about sex. I don't want to shock you, but it is an erotic love Full Moon, <laughs> full moon Ritual, so hopefully there was no false advertising. Um, if you have little ones, I'm not going to be talking about the mechanics of sex. Like, this isn't sex ed. Um, <laughs> so there isn't going to be anything technical to share with you. Hopefully you've got all of that education under your belt. I'm going to be talking about the energy of sex. Um, and in my opinion, people don't talk about sex enough. The energy of sex, the reason that sex is important to creativity and success. And I'm not really just even talking about the physical act of sex between two people. I'm talking, in some cases, simply about the act of orgasm. So we're going to be talking about orgasms and sex tonight. If that doesn't gel with the people who are watching in the room with you right now, you might want to escort them to a different place, and then hopefully you can come back and, and watch me afterward. Okay? I just don't want to surprise anybody when I start talking about words that might not be acceptable for small people. And what you're saying is yay, so I'm very, glad, I'm very glad to see that there's a welcome reaction to that. Okay. We haven't talked about, it's interesting, I've been doing these full moon rituals for, um, about, you know, just over three years. And I haven't talked about sex in quite this way before. Tonight's meditation is a kundalini rising meditation um, that I created, so it's unique. I've never seen anyone do this meditation. I haven't done this meditation before with you or anyone else. I created it just for tonight. And what I want to do is look at sex tonight through the seven chakras. So what do you need to work on in terms of sex and connection, erotic love, both for yourself, with yourself, because I do think you need to have an erotic connection with yourself, and with a partner. What do you need to work on at the root? What do you need to work on at the sacral? What do you need to work on at the solar plexus? What do you need to work on at the heart? And I want to open up some of those spaces tonight. Now, this is raw work. Um, it's hard work, and it's going to shift some things for you. I hope it's going to be very productive for you. Now, it doesn't need to be productive right this moment. 
Everyone here is clothed. Um, but it could be productive for you later. Or you can even think about um, how your body responds to the idea of alignment. You know, when you, when you have an orgasm, it aligns all of your seven chakras instantly. Did you know that? It does. So part of the reason you feel so good in that moment is it's, it's some, one of the only times in our life that all seven of those spaces, those energy centers, are in full and complete alignment. Now, right afterward, we're out of alignment again. You know, if we have sacral issues, and pardon the fire engines in the background, you know, if you have sacral issues or if you have crown issues or if you have throat issues, right after that orgasm, you, you fall back into those patterns. Part of the work, I think, spiritually, is for us to find that alignment, to seek it, and orgasm is a nice model for that, and then to hold that space. What does it feel like to be in that full alignment? where all seven of your energy centers are working in synchronicity and cooperation together. Um, I love that someone said we didn't start the fire. <laughs> but that was the response to what I said. I love it. Um, yeah, so uh, Melanie's sharing that the Egyptians used the onk symbol to enhance and prolong the energy of the orgasm and loop it. It's really interesting, right? So the orgasm in itself isn't just a feeling, isn't just an experience in the moment, but it's an alignment. In alignment, and it's something—it's a sense that you should seek outside of that unique experience. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit tonight about Shakti. Um, anybody familiar with Shakti, Hindu goddess? Okay, um, you know her union with Shiva is one of the models that we have for that sacred union that creates that alignment. Um, Shakti is actually featured in next month's ritual set because we're going to be talking about inspiration and creativity. Shakti, of course, is the energy of all. Shakti, in many ways, is the source energy. It's that place, people ask me all the time, like, how do you come up with new products all the time, or how are you constantly inspired? There are wells that we draw from, that I draw from, and I want to teach you what it feels like to draw from those wells. And part of it is your sexuality, which is sacred, but also, you know, significant. Part of it is your connection to all that it is. It's your connection to the sacred, divine feminine energy, but also masculine energy and the union of those energies that's available to you all the time. So I want to get you thinking about what does that look and feel like. We, in the West, we segment sex, don't we? Like we segment it. Like there's my 30 minutes a week or a month or a year or whatever it is for you. You know, there it is and it's off and I don't think about it or talk about it for the rest of my life. I think that's part of the root of our collective lack of consciousness, our communal consciousness, is that we're not in tap, in tune with that all that is energy. And I want to get you back there. So I like to say, um, and Veretta saying that's not true for her. Well, I celebrate you, Veretta, <laughs> um, because I wish it was not true for all of us. But it's true for many of us, and I want to help us get to a place. Um, in my generation, when I was growing up, there was Dr. <coughs> Ruth. And Dr. Ruth was always on these talk shows. And do you remember Dr. Ruth? Mm -hmm. This little tiny lady, and she was constantly talking about things that were, that were like really inappropriate, but she was so small and kind of like friendly and German, and you just, it, she wasn't offensive, you know what I mean? Like she was putting sex in terms that like people kind of laughed at her, but she was trying, <laughs> everybody's saying like, I love Dr. Ruth. She was trying to get us back to this place where we talked about these things and where it was open conversation and people felt like cultivating their sexuality was something that was important in their life. I want to get you to that place because I think therein lies, forget the actual act of sex and the orgasm itself, therein lies your connection to your partner, to all that is, to you, to yourself. Therein lies that connection. Um, and I think, you know, aging well, honestly, um, being successful, creating beautiful things in the world, living your sole purpose, it's not unrelated. I'm going out on a limb, but that's my claim. So I want to talk about all that tonight. So, hi everybody, and welcome, welcome. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And I hope you're as excited as I am for that conversation. So I'm going to do the virtual smudge for you. I've smudged everybody in the room, and I'm going to smudge you too. And I just want to invite you, especially if you're not in the beautiful classroom with us tonight, to relax, to release any concerns or cares from the day. You're here with me now and I've got you for 45 minutes. So I want you to take a deep breath. <coughs> a deep breath means you can hear it. Let's take one in the room. Go ahead and inhale. 
and exhale. That's your life force. So sit with your breath for just a moment. Release anything from the day. Release any of your cares and concerns. Everything, as I like to say, will be right there waiting for you in 45 minutes when you're done. We don't take this time for ourselves, and we need to. So give yourself the gift of 45 minutes of connection. Okay. And as I go, especially if you're new and you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. There are no dumb questions. Hopefully I won't miss any questions that come up in the feed, but I'm always happy to answer your questions. It's really important to me that this isn't just a sensory experience, that you're learning. I was a professor for a long time before I switched gears and started running Sage Goddess, so I'm a teacher at heart. I'm always happy to answer your questions. If you have. So stones and things that I'm working with tonight, if you have the ritual set for tonight, then you're in good shape. Um, if you don't, I'd like you to consider working with anything for the heart and the sacral chakras. Tonight, in particular, one of the stars of the show for me is orange calcite. That's what orange calcite looks like. It's a very leonine stone. We Leos love the sacral stones. Carnelian is one of our totem stones, the fire stone. Um, orange calcite is the same way. It's very much about opening that sacral space, sensing and feeling the surge of energy that comes from the sacral which is partly, like I said, about your sexuality and partly about your creativity because those things are like this. You ever noticed if your sexuality is out of whack that you don't have good ideas? They're very much united. I'm working also with pink opal tonight, which opens the heart space. Tonight is partly about union with a partner. You know, is your heart space open to that? What does your heart space look like? It's getting in tune. Um, we've got Unikite Jasper that we're working with, which is about um, healing the heart, but it's also about self-care. You know, part of your sexuality relates to your care for yourself, because sex is a gift that you give yourself, not just your partner. So it's about self-care, and you can read that however you want in the context of sex. Um, we have Rhodonite, which is the heart healer. Rhodonite's really cool because Rhodonite is pink and black. And the black part represents the shadow aspects of love, things that you need to know about love that represents your, represent your darker aspects or things that you haven't acknowledged about yourself. Maybe it's sabotage in a relationship. Do you consistently sabotage yourself in relationships? This is your stone. We have topaz, which is the seeker stone, seeking union, seeking connection, seeking the opening of that creative space, seeking, 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 seeking. It's a very powerful stone, and of course, we always use um, quartz to magnify. This month's set came with this really cool bottle of tourmaline, this little love wish bottle. Tourmaline is a really powerful stone. Green tourmaline represents wisdom and love. Pink tourmaline opens the heart, heals the heart from wounds, helps you overcome trauma in love if you've had trauma in relationships. Uh, blue tourmaline opens the throat chakra to help you speak what you need in relationship and in love. This is a very powerful set of stones. And then Eros is our oil for tonight. Eros is sexy time in a bottle. <laughs> Haven't met a lot of people who didn't like Eros. A couple. But most. I can say that people have had sex this month because of Eros. <laughs> and as someone who created this perfume, that's very fulfilling for me. <laughs> that I made an oil that helped people get it on. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> Um, so if anybody around the room doesn't have it, I'm just going to pass my bottle if you want to experience Eros. Um, Eros is limited. It won't be available outside of the ritual set, so it's kind of a special oil. Okay. Before we dig into our meditation, I'm going to play my sacral bowl for you. This is a crystal singing bowl. It's made of quartz. It's beautiful. Um, sometimes it doesn't come through clearly on the computer. So I hope it does for you. This is called, you know, when we when we play the single singing bowls, it's called sound clearing, sound charging, raising vibration and clearing energy in a room. So if you're in the room, just close your eyes, receive. If you're online, I hope you can hear it and that you enjoy it too. It is a big bowl. Who says size doesn't matter? <laughs> when it comes to singing bowls, I'm just going to, you know, like I said, tonight we're talking about everything that takes off limits. I like a big singing bowl. 
the disclosure eyes and enjoy for just a minute. It's beautiful. The singing bowls take a minute to stop singing sometimes, which is beautiful. I don't like to stop it artificially. I like to let it just go and go and go. So, Moon and Leo talking about sex and erotic connection and opening the sacral space, opening yourself to love, to passion, to relationship, to connection and kinship. And one thing I want to say is, you know, we are talking to some extent about connection with another soul tonight. And we're not focused on soulmate unions so much. Although I, I will say, I think sexual connection with someone who is your soul's mate is different than sexual connection with someone who's not. Um, and that's a subject for a whole other conversation, as many of you, as many of you know. Um, but I do think that it's a different kind of connection. My, my hope for you, my intention for you, is that you'll know that connection in your lifetime that you'll know what that's like to experience that physical union with your soul's mate. Um, I think people can have multiple soulmates over the course of a lifetime, um, but I hope at some point in your life that you, that you know what that connection is like. And I do think, I'll say this, as you, as you open and clear and align your chakras and as you rise that kundalini energy, you become more open to that level of connection. I really believe it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I think as you create space, and it's interesting, we talk about belly dance here, and a lot of people who work for me are belly dancers, and I take belly dance classes myself. Belly dance, one of the powers of it, I think, is that it's, um, it, this is how we describe it, it's dancing through your vagina. <laughs> I mean, it very much is. It opens up those lower chakras in a way that's very powerful, and it creates a sexual energy that people who are doing that dance or experiencing that dance, they feel it. Um, but I do think there are different ways to access that sexual energy. Tonight is just one, and I think the meditation, if you've been trying to open that space, will be very powerful for you. Okay, so I'm going to start by opening our circle, which I always do. Um, keep in mind, we have people gather for this meditation. It's very powerful. By the time it's done, between five and 7,000 people usually have, have watched this recording in the next hour from between 20 and 30 countries around the world, almost every continent is represented. We have people stay up all night to join us. Um, and so as we open our circle, I really want you to be present to the energy, the connection, the global nature of this circle. Because as I open it and as you hold the circle with me, I'm not doing this alone, as you hold the circle with me, you're holding the energy of thousands of people from all walks of life. And what I love about energetic work is this is the tie that binds us. I'm not that different from you. I might be sitting in a different room. I might look different than you do. But I am an energetic being, just like you are. I'm a soul on a journey, just like you are. And when we do this work, there's a very interesting connection synergy between us that I think is very powerful. I hope you feel and sense it tonight. Um, so I want you to sit with your hands on your knees and your palms facing up toward the ceiling. <coughs> roll your shoulders back. Take notice of your posture. A lot of us just kind of slump over all day long. I want you to roll your shoulders back. Sit up nice and tall. Try and get your spine into some nice alignment. Try and move through your life this way. 
sit up taller, roll your shoulders back. When you roll your shoulders back, you breathe more deeply through your diaphragm. You experience more of your own life force. Don't slump. Roll your shoulders back. Call your energy into the room where you are, away from whoever has it. If you've been somewhere else today, connecting with people, sending your energy in different places, just calling all of your energy back right now. Pulling it all back to you, energizing your body, mind, spirit. I want you to imagine that out of your left hand, extends a white beam of light that's about four to six inches in diameter. That white beam of light extends out of your left hand and into the right hand of the person who's virtually seated next to you tonight or seated next to you in the circle in this room this evening. That beam of light is going to connect all of us around this circle and hold the space for us this evening. So it's going to leave your left hand, enter their right hand, it's going to move into their body and out of their body, out of their left hand and into the right hand of the person seated next to them. And in that way, it's going to make its way all the way around our circle tonight, crossing oceans and continents and time and distance. Just imagine it winding its way from here in Los Angeles out over that vast Pacific across past Hawaii, out to Asia, winding its way down to the Southern Hemisphere, crossing Africa, the entire African continent, New Zealand and Australia, winding its way back up to Europe, Northern Europe, Northern Asia, all the way up to the North Pole, and winding its way back down across Iceland, all the way to Canada, love Canada, back here to the United States, crossing all 50 states, down to South America. So visualizing as we go, coming back to us here in Los Angeles, and you're holding that. It'll come back to you in your right hand, and as it does, you're literally holding the energy of the circle in your hands, just like I am. And as you do that, I want you to visualize sending around that circle the highest vibration emotions you can summon. Love, compassion. There are some people in this circle with great sadnesses tonight. Sending compassion. Sending acceptance. Sending appreciation. Sending kindness. Remember, everything you send comes back to you threefold, tenfold, a thousandfold. Sending integration, sending connection with the divine, sending protection. If you need something, don't ask for it. Send it out. It's one of the cardinal rules of my practice. If you need something, don't ask for it. Send it out. receiving that back. And with that, we have opened our circle. Our circle is open. And thank you for holding that energy in your hands. The next thing I do before meditation at each time, and a lot of you know this, a lot of you love it, is my um, calling to the four directions or four cardinal elements which is both a Celtic or pagan and a Native American practice too. Tonight's is a little different because I'm doing a love invocation, a love calling to the cardinal elements. So I want you just to sit back. A lot of you love this, and I love that you love it. It's a beautiful thing. This one's different, so if you'd like it, you know, I have Facebook groups that you should join. One of them is the Full Moon Ritualists, and I will post this in the Full Moon group tonight as a JPEG. So if you'd like to have this invocation for your own practice, you're more than welcome to have it. Just make sure you're in the Facebook group, and I'll post it there for you. I begin by calling to the direction of East, and I call to Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini, to all of the air signs. This is an element of air. I call to you, air, and I ask that love flows like the wind between us. 
kindred spirits who've known each other for lifetimes, as our souls reconnect in this sacred space, let us remember to move like the smoke, effortless. Our spirit soaring like eagle whose masterful movement reminds us of our own strength and power. This is what we feel when we let go and we surrender to source. I call to the direction of south. This is element of fire and this is for you if you're an Aries, a Leo or Sagittarius. I call to you fire into the heat between lovers as they connect. Bodies that move in sacred rhythm and the dance of passion between them. Ecstasy as we explore the edges of our consciousness. The warmth of desire binds us, reminds us that we are spirits encased in human form. This is our ability to touch and feel the fire, our connection to the divine. Our fire is the desire we share and it shall never be extinguished. I call next to the element of water, this is direction of west, and this is for you if you're Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. I call to you water and to my love. To the ends of the earth I will follow your currents, and I have for lifetimes. I have crossed continents and consciousness to be yours and for you to be mine. Tears, sadness, joy, ecstasy, the emotions of desire and loss and happiness all parts of the experience of surrendering fully to love. I feel and I move like you, water flowing endlessly, back to the sea, my home, and the source of all life. And last, I call to the element of earth. This is direction of north, and this is for you if you're Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus. I call to you, earth, to the place where we beloveds find each other again and again, after centuries of looking and longing searching and finding. This, place, this space and this place, sacred, where we touch and connect. This is where spirit love is made manifest. For us to enjoy until breath leaves these mortal bodies and we return to our great spirit for the next step in this journey. I honor the four elements of love, of connection, and thank you to the four directions for holding our sacred space this evening. And I want you to repeat this part with me. I'm going to have everybody in the room repeat it. I'd like you also online to repeat it. It's a very powerful affirmation. You ready? I am love. I am love. I accept love. I accept love. I welcome love. I welcome love. I honor love. I honor love. I breathe love. I breathe love. I know love. I know love. Love makes itself known to me. Love makes itself known to me. And I surrender to the call of spirit. And I surrender to the call of spirit. When my beloved re reveals himself to me. When my beloved reveals himself to me. Or herself. My wish for you tonight my dear friends who are in the circle, my wish for you always when we gather live at these, at these rituals together is that the delicate and precious balance of these four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, will make itself known to you this evening in all ways. The elements are here as tools for you in your sacred practice. If you're a fire sign, ask yourself, how can I move more like water? How can I move more like earth? How can I move more like air? Find that balance. Ask your guides to make that balance known to you. It will heal your body. It will heal your mind and your spirit too. So together we say, as we always do after we do our prayers and our opening invocations, Amen, Aho, and so it is. Amen. So it is. And blessings to you. As you do the big work of showing up to love. And to your body, which is a vessel for love. You're here to love. I hate to break it to you. You're not here to do much else. <laughs> You're here to love and to experience love and to spread love in the world and to figure out what that unique offering is going to be that's yours. What are, you, what are you here to do? What are you here to make? Who are you here to love? Who's here to feel love from you? Your love creates life. For some of you, my love created mine, created two lives. It's love. 
My body carried love. My body delivered love twice. What are you here to do? I want you to hold that question while we go into our meditation this evening. It's very important. Um, and I'm blessed to hold the container for this work tonight. You know, I, I do think it's part of my work in the world to reconnect people with their deeper passions because we've had it numbed out of us for a very long time. So let's get back. So I want to invite you to, um, I'm going to light my candle now. I've already lit mine, but I'm going to light it again. This is the erotic love candle that I'm working with. I light my candles, just so you know how my practice works, I light my candles from full moon to full moon. So I start mine at the full moon, and I will finish this at the March full moon. So I do the work in the month ahead. Some people get their ritual tools, and they get all excited, and they just light their candle and go, and that's okay too. I don't really enjoy rules in life. I broke them a lot as a young person and got in a lot of trouble. So as an adult, I try not to make a lot of rules for people other than my children. Um, so I'm not going to make rules for you. I really would like you to do what feels good to you. But if you have a candle with you, I'd like you to light it. Um, the other thing I like to do, and even if you have, like this month's perfume is in a little roller bottle, which I love because I like to pop these in my purse. But I like to take the lid off of my perfume, which I'm doing now, and I like to add some to my candle. Because when you connect the energy of your oil, this isn't just perfume, this is a sacred oil that's created with intention. When you add that energy to your candle, and I pour it not directly on the flame, I pour it onto the wax, just around the wax, you, as your candle burns down, the energy of that oil is infused into the candle as it burns. So it's another way to use your perfume other than just perfume. I have a little bit left on my hand, so I'm going to take my stones, whatever stones you're working with, put them in your non-writing hand, cover them with your writing hand, just like this, okay? And we're going to set an intention together tonight before our meditation, okay? We're going to set a big intention, because I'm a Leo, and this is a Leo moon, and to me that means you go big or you go home. And I don't go home. In your non-writing hand, covering with your writing hand. Okay. Now we use gemstones because they're talismans, they're reminders. They have energies, they raise vibrations in rooms and spaces. We use them because they're tools. They're beautiful, but they are tools. And so once we dedicate these tools and set an intention with them, keep them together or, you know, put one in your purse, put one on your desk, let them become reminders to you of this work tonight, okay? So my intention for my stones and for yours is that they become reminders of how sacred you are, that your body is a vessel for love, for passion, for connection to your divine, to your source. And that all that you do, everything you are, should flow through you. My intention is that when you hold these stones or feel these stones or see these stones, you will be reminded of how sacred you are. How powerful you are as a being. And how very much your own physical alignment impacts and shapes the world around you. So may you know that, may you feel that, may you sense it, may you vibrate with that passion and that connection in every day of your life, everything that you do. When people meet you, may they sense it about you. There's something different, that you're in full alignment, you're fully connected to your source, to your divinity, and to your, to your inner knowing, to your deepest passions and desires. And so it is. So, this, so it is that these stones hold that energy for you. Keep them with you as we meditate. And it'll fuse additional energy into them. Somebody's man just sent her a text saying that he misses her. I bet he did. <laughs> like that. Don't mean to call you out, Penny, but that was kind of exciting for me, I have to say. Okay. You know, your, um, your energy affects everything and everyone around you. Every day, all day long. you got to take responsibility for that energy. It's your responsibility alone. 
So it's important that we do this work, and part of the reason we do it is because you need to be mindful of your energy. And when you're connected to your source, when you're in your body, when you're sensing your own creativity and your own sexuality, your own passion, you're not just improving your own life. You're improving the life of everybody around you who encounters you, who, even those who don't encounter you. It's very, very true. Facebook is an example. Is it not? Facebook is this huge energetic experiment to me. People's feeds, you think they don't affect you? They do. What they post, when they post, how they post, what they say, that if it's negative or positive or creative or draining, it's impacting your life. You have to really be mindful of the energy around you. One day I think we'll know it, you know? Now it's just sort of a hint. It's a, it's a concept. But everything around you impacts you all day long. Okay, so coming back to the re that receptive position, hands on your knees, palms facing up. So what is the kundalini? I'm going to tell you what it is to me. The kundalini is an ancient sacred energy. It's the divine feminine that resides within everyone, male and female. And it sits at the base of your spine. So I want you to take just a moment and rock on your spine. Feel your hips. Lift your hips all the way off the floor. Really feel that space. I want you to get in your body. Start to really get in your body. Those of you who do yoga or who dance, who do physical activity, you're in your body. But some of us don't. So I really want you to get a sense and feel of what that, you know, shake your tail feathers a little bit. Feel what that kundalini, <laughs> that kundalini feels like. Feels really good, doesn't it? The kundalini sits like a serpent around the base of your spine. Snakes are very sexual, are they not? The slithering, the winding, it's very feminine, seductive energy, snake medicine. It's scary. A snake can bite you. All women can bite you. I hate to break it to you, gentlemen, <laughs> ladies, all women bite. But the snake can also seduce. It can charm you. <laughs> I'm glad I'm making you laugh, but I'm I'm actually being quite serious, right? I mean, this is the this is the imagery of the kundalini, and I want you to begin to sense and feel it. And I want to give you I'm a visual learner, so I want to give you a visual to attach to that, okay? So I want you to see that kundalini energy, and you can envision it if you want as a snake wrapped around your tailbone, right at the base, right where you were just shaking your tail feathers. <sighs> Sits at your root. And in ascension, I mean, in ideal practice, that kundalini rises all the way up your seven energy centers of your chakras and it exits through your crown and it connects you to the divine. That's what we're going to try and do tonight in about 10 minutes. So get excited about how fast and furious this is going to be. Yeah, and Jenny is saying that she feels like she's shedding that skin too. Very much so. So as that kundalini rises, it can shed. And what I've noticed is when people rise the kundalini, they look different. You ever notice that? If you're feeling really sexy and beautiful or really handsome and attractive, um, you look different. It's different. If you're having a lot of sex, you look different. I was going to say it. You do. If you're having sex, you look different. Um, good sex. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> productive sex, let me say. When I speak of productive sex, I think orgasm is really important. I'm not interested in sex where you don't have an orgasm. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the good stuff that results in a climax because that's what aligns your chakras. So I want to start to envision as we go through this meditation that kundalini rising, that snake starting to wind its way up. I always think of the Egyptian temples. I'm somebody very connected to Egypt because I know I've had a past life there as a priestess. But you know the snakes used to wind their way up the columns in the temples. It's very seductive. And they did it by firelight, by candlelight, so you could watch. I've seen it in past life regressions for myself. They used to wind their way up the temple columns. That's very much what's going to happen to you tonight as it rises its way through your chakras. So I want to begin at the root and I'm going to give you a series of visualizations and affirmations. So beginning at that root chakra, the affirmation here is I am safe to enjoy my sexuality. You can say it in your mind, you can say it out loud, I am safe to enjoy my sexuality. So here what we're doing as we rise that kundalini is we're releasing any trauma, any pain, 
And that can be all kinds of things, my friends. That can be rape and that can be all kinds of sexual trauma from, from childhood on. We're releasing that tonight. Huge work to be done here. And when you affirm that I am safe to enjoy my sexuality fully, by the way, I am safe to be a full sexual being. We're shedding all that skin and allowing ourselves to recover completely from that, from that experience. So I want you to feel that safety. We're going to breathe here. So go ahead and inhale and exhale. Feel what it feels like to be safe, to be a sexual being. You teach your body, this is shamanic practice, you teach your body to have a somatic memory of the good and the bad. So let's have a somatic memory of this positive experience of being a safe sexual being here today. And then winding up one more chakra. So we're leaving that root chakra. We're moving up to the sacral. The sacral chakra sits between your testes or your ovaries. It's an orange spinning disc. It's the seat of creativity and sexuality. So here the affirmation is, I enjoy and I benefit from my sexuality. And the benefit, of course, is your creative potential. If your sacral chakra is balanced, you're enjoying sex. Sex is creative for you. It's procreative for you. Your, creative, your ideas are flowing. Your art is being created. Your dance is coming alive. Your hands are creating. You've got ideas. You're waking up in the middle of the night. You're so inspired. That's an active sacral chakra. An active sacral chakra means that orgasm is easy for you, that you're able to speak what you need, show what you need to a partner or to yourself. This also means releasing trauma from miscarriage, from abortion from women. For men, it might be trauma of um, infertility, of impotence. We're releasing all that tonight. Anxiety about performance gets released. Imagine that. If you've had challenges, which a lot of people come to me with a lot of challenges around performance or fertility, what if you release all of that? It's possible. So I want you to have a somatic experience now of what it feels like to enjoy and benefit from your sexuality. Feel what that feels like. Forgiving yourself here if you have had any kind of experience with your sexuality that has been traumatic for you. That's a big one for a lot of people. Knowing not just to forgive yourself, but that you are forgiven. For a lot of my clients, this is about abortion. Remember that souls have contracts. Some have contracts not to come through. So take that moment here to experience that, knowing that you are forgiven, that you can enjoy this space, that this space is healed. And go ahead and breathe there. And exhale. If you've had C-sections like I have, this is a, a night to close that wound just to heal, to feel integrated there again, to feel whole there again. Moving up to the solar plexus, that serpent winding, winding its way. Solar plexus chakra sits two finger widths above your belly button. You might take your fingers there and find yours. It's a yellow spinning disc of light. It's the center of your confidence. This is where your personal power resides. This is your self-esteem we're talking about right now. So the mantra here is, I am confident in my sexuality. That means a lot of things, but let's try it, okay? I am confident in my sexuality. 
This is where we heal issues of sex, sexuality, sexual orientation. It's a big one here. Sexual identity. Whoever or whatever you are is beautiful. It's erotic. It's desirable. You and your full integrity and authenticity. It's very hard for people in our culture to acknowledge. But imagine this. I think I've had about nine lifetimes, and I'd say about three quarters of them were female. I've been a man before. I think women are kind of hot. But there's a part of me that used to have sex with women. So if I think that's wrong, <laughs> that creates a discrepancy in my own spirit. Sexuality for me is very sim simple to describe. Because if people are you know, bisexual or homosexual or heterosexual, We've been around the block quite a few times, my friends. Try not to judge so much. Whoever and whatever you are, be confident there. So have the experience of feeling that, feeling fully confident in whoever and whatever you are sexually. Claiming that tonight, really owning it, finding out how deeply sexy that is. And let's breathe here. Moving to the heart chakra. Here we go. Winding, winding. So here for me, the affirmation is, I am free to unite love and sex. I am free to unite love and sex. We've been taught to keep it separate, right? Or that if you really love somebody, you've been married a long time, it's different. If you have really good sex, you're probably not in love. Whatever you've been taught to think or feel, breaking those bonds open a little bit tonight to really see that sex is a form of love. If we see love as an all-binding connection, sex is a form of love. Can you open your heart to receive the connection you need to receive to feel safe and confident and to be able to enjoy sex? That's my question for you tonight. So let's take a moment to feel this, to feel that integration of sex and love. Let's go ahead and breathe here. Another big one. We're going to wind, wind, wind to the throat. I speak what I need in love, in love and in sex. In love and in sex. This is the affirmation. I speak my desires. Can you do it? Right? Can you speak your desires to yourself? Can you speak your desires to your partner? And I think this is a really critical part of the experience of sex for so many of us is being able to articulate what I need, what I need from you to experience pleasure, what I need from myself to experience pleasure, and feeling really safe to communicate whatever that is. Which, by the way, as you age, it changes. <laughs> okay? What turns you on today may not have turned you on 10 years ago. What was going to turn you on 10 years from now may not turn you on today. Evolving in your ability to speak what you need in sex and sexuality is very, very important. So let's take a moment to acknowledge what that feels like. And really try to visualize it. Like if you have a partner, visualize speaking to that partner what you need. And let's go ahead here and breathe. It's a big one for many of us, speaking what we need. No subject off limits, Lisa. I like it. <laughs> you guys are um, cracking me up with your comments. I'm trying to stay very focused, but I see all of you. Okay, so here's to becoming vocal. 
Now let's move here to the third eye, again, that serpent, that kundalini serpent rising to the third eye, to your seat of intuition. This is that intuitive connection to sex and sexuality that's so important. It's the sensing of that partnership. It's the sensing of what you need. It's that instant connection between soulmates that I think is so powerful that sometimes manifests itself sexually um, and sometimes doesn't. But it's that trusting of your inner knowing around sex and sexuality that's so critical to fulfillment. So here the affirmation is, I trust my inner knowing, trust my inner knowing of my sexual needs. Of my sexual needs. What does that look like to have an intuitive experience of sex? Not just a visceral one, especially for men. You know, this is becoming more attuned to your divine feminine, to that feminine way of knowing, that inner knowing, and not just the visceral physical reaction. So, and for women too, like what do you need right now? What would feel good to you? What would turn you on? It's connecting to that inner knowing, that inner sense of what you need. And sense and feel what that's like, just for a moment. Opening that third eye chakra space. And let's breathe here. <sighs> Sex begins in the mind, does it not? It starts right here. And then moving up to the crown, rising that kundalini. And again, the, the ideal scenario is that kundalini rises all the way up to your crown chakra and then expands out into the world. That's the ideal scenario. So that's where we're headed tonight. Connects you with your divine. Okay, so here is where people really struggle is seeing sex as a divine activity. Well, we've been taught, haven't many of us, that sex is naughty, and you shouldn't masturbate. There was a meme that went around Facebook not too long ago, and it said, every time you masturbate, I swear this is what it said, every time you masturbate, God kills a kitten. <laughs> I'm, I, I can't make that up. I'm sorry, but I can't. Um, and it, it had a picture of a kitten. I worry about my kids on Facebook. <laughs> anyway, that's not what happens when you masturbate. Good things happen when you masturbate. Um, so, and some people prefer that to a union, no judgment there. So, like I said, tonight's more about the connection. It's, and a connection be, can be an inner union. <laughs> I, I'm not going to speak to whether or not I killed a cat today. <laughs> I might kill a cat later. I'm getting a little worked up tonight, I have to say. Um, but some of you are too, so I don't think I'm alone. I'm reading the comments and in a sense a lot of activity is going to happen after tonight. <laughs> and it's a full moon, what can I say? So we've been taught that sex is naughty, sex is not naughty. Um, but sex is powerful when sex opens up channels of energy that may not be helpful if people are trying to put you in a box and constrict you and constrict your sense of connection and constrict your energy. So I can see why institutions would want to keep people away from sexual activity, but it's not. It is the root of your connection to yourself and your, and your divine. So I want you to imagine that... Um, that here the affirmation is, sex is my connection to the divine. Sex is my connection. Sex is my connection to the divine. And again, when I say sex, I'm not necessarily saying you have to have sex with someone. It's the connecting of yourself to yourself, because ultimately sexual connection just opens you. And that's what's what really what we're talking about here. I want you to really feel what that means, especially those of you who were raised thinking sex was bad, you know, or that you had to wait until marriage and all these things that we've been taught and ingrained. I, I will say this, and I'm going out on a limb. This is the world according to Athena, so if you don't agree, that's okay. Um, I think sex binds you to people. Um, one of my very early teachers told me to be careful having sex with people. 
And she said, I'm not coming from an ethical or even a moral place because I don't really care who you have sex with, but I want you to know that when you have sex with people, there is an intermingling of energy that's permanent. And I thought, imagine teaching your children this. Rather than saying, don't have one night stands or don't do this or don't get pregnant, what if you told your children, when you have sex with someone, some part of them lingers with you forever? Sort of like groundwater. Some part of them seeps down into you. No pun intended. Um, and lives within you forever. I think it's true. I think you carry the essence of that person with you forever. So make a conscious choice. This is what my teacher said. Make a conscious choice. Who receives that from you? Because they've got part of your life force for good. Isn't that a different way of thinking about sex? They've got part of your life force for good. And you of them. But who do you want that from? Not a lot of people <laughs> today. So make conscious choices. That makes you think differently, doesn't it? Better believe this is going to be my sex ed talk with my kids in a couple years. Who do you want to carry that around with forever? Maybe a couple people. But it's beautiful too, you know? Sex with that person, even if you're not able to spend your life with them, you carry part of them with you forever. They're with you forever. So taking just a moment to feel that. It's you, it's the partnership, it's the divine, it's that permanent connection. It's binding. It connects you to all that is. And that sex is a way of experiencing what I think is the most divine love. You weren't given the ability to have an orgasm and feel passion and connection with people for nothing. In those moments, I'll tell you, the moment of orgasm to me, because I've had a near-death experience where I slipped between the worlds. Some of you know this, but I lost consciousness and I slipped down. And the only way I can describe the experience is, to me, there were two spheres, my, the conscious life that I'm in and this other place that I was going, and I slipped. And it was... It was it felt like an orgasm. It's the only way I can describe it to you. It felt like that moment of like, you have to surrender control. When you have an orgasm, what's really powerful about an orgasm from an energetic perspective is you have to surrender control of your breath. It's the only time in your waking life for your entire life when you will surrender control of the breath completely. You have to, otherwise you can't have an orgasm. And in that moment of death, it's the surrender of the breath completely that's unconscious and I think we were meant to have that experience because it's a gift from the divine the, mo the moment, only other moment you'll have that experience and you're not in a physical state of orgasm is when you die I think when you slip between the worlds and you surrender your breath for the last time is the last time you'll feel that experience outside of a sexual um, context something to think about Taking that moment here just to feel that. And then sense, we'll stop here in just a moment, but sense what that has felt like tonight to feel that energy rising. I am safe. I enjoy and I benefit. I'm empowered around my sexual self. I know who I am. I'm confident there. I have united sex and love. I can open my heart space. I can speak what I need from sex, from partnership, from myself. I have an inner knowing about my sexual needs. I'm connected to my divine as a sexual being. Sex is the source of all. It's the release of your conscious mind. So let's take one more, as we really feel what this feels like right this second, let's take one more really good deep breath here. Go ahead and inhale. And exhale. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. The little death, as Sparkle Mama is saying, le petit mort in French, my little French accent there, is the little death. It's the closest you'll come. It is the closest you'll come to death before you do it. For reals. <laughs> Later. Um, I would love to post the, um, the affirmations I will in the full moon group. So if you're in there, I'll post both the um, invocation from tonight as well as the affirmations. And somebody's boa has actually been crawling up her body while we've been here, Shelly, so that's very exciting.
she took it very literally your boa i would have to say she was like oh we'll, we'll do this now that's very exciting okay so that's the end of our visualization for tonight, but I would invite you, this is recorded, you can come back anytime. The really cool thing is now that we've changed online platforms, when you go to sagegoddess.com slash full moon, that's where all of this year's full moon rituals are going to be. And you can just click play on any month you want, so I'll be there. It's a really cool little player that we've set up. It's a lot easier than trying to find links. There's one link for the whole year, sagegoddess.com slash full moon, and it'll just say February, March, April, May, June. And you can click on what you want to see. Super cool, isn't it? Okay, so so we have a, a couple of matters of, of business to do before we close, but I want to close our circle. So I want you to come back to that receptive position with your hands on your knees, palms facing up. That circle of light that we sent around the world that circle of light came to you in your right hand. You're going to release it now from your right hand, and it's going to go counterclockwise, unwinding its way back, moving backwards across the path it traced to come to you. And as you release that circle, just letting that energy grow, go and feeling really grateful, feeling a sense of gratitude for everybody who's here with us tonight. You know, we don't reuse energy. We don't sit in circle alone. We do it together. So I'm grateful for you, and I want you to feel the gratitude and love for everybody who's here with us, with you tonight. Watching that energy wind its way back around. And it'll come back to you. The conclusion of it will come back to you in your left hand. Sort of like retracting a cord. And when it does, what I like to visualize is taking my left hand, and you can even do it physically. It's very helpful. And turning it upside down. And when you do that, you're going to send the energy of the circle down into the center of the earth. It's really important when you do ritual circle to ground the energy. When we send energy down to the center of the earth, I like to tell people energy is not created and it's not destroyed. You can't make energy and you can't destroy it. Energy is. You were born, but you already existed. You will die, but your spirit goes on. So we're just transforming energy. We're just raising energy, but we're not creating or destroying anything. So when that energy goes to the center of the earth, what we do is we ask our guides to send it out where it needs to go, to transform it, to receive it, and then to send it back out into the world so that even people who aren't in the circle benefit from the beauty of the experience that we've had here together tonight. I like that idea. And we ask the four directions to hold our space. If you recall, we ended with north, so I like to release the directions and thank them for, for being represented in our circle. So I begin with north. Thank you, element of north, with your grounding energy here tonight. We release you from service to our circle. Thank you, direction of west, for your flowing water energy tonight. We release you from service to our circle. Again, counterclockwise down to south, energy of fire. Thank you for bringing that fiery, courageous, passionate energy to our very sexy circle tonight. We release you from service. And then back to east. East is where life begins. We thank you, air energy, for allowing the energy we raised tonight to flow so beautifully across. And sharing the energy, the experience together tonight is very much an air element exercise. We release you from your service to the circle. And with that, our circle is open and grounded. And it helps too if you're a you know, real empath. <laughs> if you're a real empath and you sense energy powerfully, again, rock, kind of rocking on that root, sensing your root chakra. Sometimes I keep um, a rooting, like I keep smoky quartz on my altar all the time. You will always see smoky quartz on every altar space I have. because it's a, it's a protective stone. It transmutes energy. But it also grounds you, so you can you know grab your rooting stone if you have one and kind of hold it if you're somebody who sort of gets the, what we call the ritual buzz off of experiences like those. Because I, I need you to be able to walk and drive and things like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can't just be floating around in your crown chakra after this for a few hours. You can if you're at home in the safety and comfort of your own home. But okay, 
Well, I'm so glad you guys liked it. Did you in the room like it? Everybody online had a good time, but did you guys enjoy Let's the experience? Go. Yay! Um, any advice? Somebody's asking if they've been they've been trying to deepen their sexual relationship with their partner. Any advice or books? Unfortunately, there isn't anything specific that I would direct you to. But I do think people look at sex in relationship in a very technical way. And they don't realize that it's it's a holistic, it's an energetic um, situation. So needing to address, if you go to my blog, there's a really cool post. I don't promote my blog very often, but there's a really cool post called The Five Energetic Principles of Sex. And it's the best thing I've ever written about sex. And it talks about how, you know, what men need from women is they need to feel masculine for the most part. Women make a mistake of not supporting their men's masculinity. What women need from men is to feel deeply feminine. Men make the mistake of not helping their women feel deeply feminine for the most part. And so one of the things I tell people is an ideal sexual relationship is where I say to you as a partner, this is a heterosexual model by the way, but go with the example. I say to you as a man, I'm coming to you fully as a woman. I know who I am. I'm all grown up. I know what I need. I can tell you what I need. And I want to meet you as a man. And I want you to come completely to me as a man. That's the perfect union. And that man feels like a man. And that woman feels like a woman. And there's a connection there that's equal. And what men need to be able to do is come to a woman and say, I'm coming to you completely as a man. I want you to be a woman. And I want you to feel what that feels like to be that full divine feminine to my divine masculine. And ideally... The woman can feel that union of masculine and feminine in her, and the man can feel the union of the feminine and the masculine within him, too. So it's a heterosexual example. Like I said, I'm not heterosexist. I'm very much in favor of gay rights. So I love the idea that two men can come to each other in their full masculine and find fulfillment there, too, and two women can come together. And that, again, that balance of masculine and feminine. But what I want, ideally, for each of you to be able to say is, I know who I am. I know what I need. I'm safe to have this experience with you. I also take full responsibility for this experience with you. I'm showing up. And I'm not waiting for you to complete me. I'm fully complete. I want to complete myself with you. Do you know what I mean? That's a different kind of relationship. That's not a power dynamic. That's a trust dynamic. And that's two big grown-up people connecting with each other in a way that that's a whole different ballgame than most of us are used to. Now, some men don't know what to do with that in a woman. That, that can be kind of scary. Like, ooh, you know who you are, and you're a big grown-up woman? <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> you know, or like, women saying, ooh, you're a whole integrated man who's in touch with his divine feminine, and you're coming to me fully as a man, and you expect me to be a big grown-up woman? I don't know what to do with that. Let's find out what that feels like. That to be is erotic. Danger zone. Okay. Okay, so so that's her tonight. So these stones, this perfume, this candle that you've been working with tonight, if you've been working with tools, they're charged up with this. Um, I have customers ask me things like about insertion of things. I don't want you to do that. I'm just putting it out there because people ask me the question and later offline somebody will ask me the question. These are just tools for you to keep in your space. These aren't toys, okay? Um, <laughs> this is perfume, okay? This is not any other kind of product. But these are charged with an energy. There should be a love altar in your room. There should, even if you're single. Even if it's just your love with you, there should be a love altar in your room. That raises a vibration that's really, really powerful. Yes, somebody's quoting me, these aren't toys. Well, I said it. You wouldn't believe how many times we get asked <laughs> about things like that, often enough where we have an answer. I'll put it that way. Um, <laughs> Okay, so let me talk to you about, because actually what's really interesting about tonight is that it's transitioning into March in a really beautiful way. <laughs> the comments are really cracking me up. I'm just trying to stay focused, but I wish everybody in the room here could read them. You guys are really cracking me up. you got to keep your sense of humor. Um, anyway, so next month's set is for inspiration. March is the month of inspiration because March is the return of what season in the Northern Hemisphere? Spring. Life. Okay? When you think of the wheel of the year in Celtic practice, this was an agricultural cycle. So March was a big month because it meant spring was coming and crops would start growing. It's a big deal in agricultural history. Okay? 
So inspiration is always the theme that we work with here at Sage Goddess. Um, so our ritual coming up in March is already an event page that you can go and register for, and I hope you'll join me. Join the Facebook group for Sage Goddess Full Moon Ritualists, um, and also join the Sage Goddess Gem Haven um, Facebook group if you love gemstones. There's two different places, and they're both free. They're really fun communities to join, but you'll get all the information. What I want you to see across the two rituals, this is the interesting connection. We've been talking about sex tonight, and next month we're talking about inspiration. But sex is the root of inspiration. That alignment, that connection, that orgasm, that that connecting to source is the root of your inspiration in the world. It truly is. If you don't believe me, try it. So interestingly, the perfume for next month is called Shakti. Anybody know who Shakti is? Some people in the room know who Shakti is. Shakti in the Hindu tradition is the goddess. She's the source of all creation. And what's interesting about Shiva and Shakti, and this is Shiva is the male consort of Shakti. What's interesting about Shiva and Shakti is that they represented that divine union. You know, in Hindu tradition, they talk about sex all the time. Not so much here in the West. Wish we did. They talk about sex all the time. And Shiva and Shakti's union was the spark of creation. So Shakti is this source. It's this connection. It's, it's you pulling up, and I want you to think about this. It's you pulling up inspiration from the earth and from the sky. It's both places. It's what's above you and what's below you. You're a channel for all of those things. And so everything we've been talking about tonight about sexual energy and the flow of sexual energy, next month I want to channel that into helping you think about inspiration to inspire you. Because the, the challenge for you is the whole reason that you're here, you're watching me, you're listening to me, you're in the room, the whole reason that you're here is to figure out what you're supposed to do in this life. That's your work. And you're not done yet or you wouldn't be alive. So it's your work right now. No matter what you do for a living or anything else, you are here to figure out what your offering is to the world. Next month, my entire meditation is to inspire you to bring that offering into the world. And I have something really, really special planned for that. So I want you to join the event page. Um, I want to show you next month's set. You guys are asking what crystals are in, in it. And it's a really interesting set of stones. If you go to um, the Etsy site, you'll see a whole page description that talks about all the stones. Um, but it's a blend of root stones, throat chakra stones, and crown stones because the idea is alignment. Okay. Here's what's really cool about next month's set. It's a new line of candles for us and it's, it's our feng shui collection. Okay, we've started doing what we call a magical home line. So this is our first of our poured um, candles here at Sage Goddess that follows the Bagua map. Does anybody know the Bagua map? Yeah. So this is about what energies are present in a room in each corner and also in the center to support different activities. So inspiration, the color of inspiration in Feng Shui is white and we're going to talk about how to set up altar spaces for the rest of the year for each of the concepts, inspiration, abundance, um, family, connection to your family, passion, and where to put those in your home. You can use the Bagua to map a room or to map an entire house or to map an entire building. It's a really fascinating thing. So with the ritual set, you're going to get a little Bagua map that you can use to map your house. And we'll talk about how to set, set up an inspiration altar space. Very cool. So there's banded amethyst, which is about grounding yourself, but also connecting you to your source. It's a channeling stone. There's blue lace agate, which is a stone of creativity. It's the number one stone for creativity. Did you know that? It's blue lace agate. Number one, they call it the muses stone. From like the Greek muses, the spirits that would come and bring inspiration. Blue lace agate is the muses stone. There's sunset aura, which opens the sacral space. So it, it sort of extends the theme of tonight into next month. Um, there is... Um, a fancy jasper stone, which is about supporting you as you do your creative work in the world. It gives you the nourishment you need to do that. There's Tibetan quartz, which heals you. This is a master healer stone from Tibet. Heals you as you do that creative work in the world. And then there's red jasper, which is a stone of strength. Strengthens you as you do your work in the world. So it holds all of those energies. And then your Shakti perfume. This is a really special set. There's fewer of them than I've had. So if you do want one, you should get one. In the, in the next five, like five to seven days, because we haven't, we don't have as many of these because it's a new kind of candle for us. We can't produce as many as we usually do. But if you're in the Pentacle program, it comes free to you, so you don't have to purchase this month's set. The Shakti perfume is a blend of florals, but it's rooted with a, a really nice sandalwood, a Hawaiian sandalwood. So it's it's soft, but it has a, it dries down to a really a beautiful 
grounded, very earthy scent. But I think you'll like it. It's different than um, a lot of things that we've done. And it's not going to be separate. Um, but if you have the Shiva perfume from last year, which also is not available, but it's a collector's item now. If you have the Shiva perfume, I would really recommend that you combine that with the Shakti to do ritual work around creativity. Because that union is very powerful. And even in the union of perfumes, it would be very powerful. A very cool thing to have. Okay, so I will see you in March. Very much looking forward to it. Head over to the Full Moon Ritualist page because we're going to announce the winner of the, if we haven't already, I think we announced the winner. They were doing it while I was in the ritual this evening. So if you haven't seen who won the giveaway for tonight of the pink tourmaline, we'll announce it there in the Full Moon Ritualist page. Um, but if you registered for the event, you were eligible. So I'm very excited for the winner, but I want to make sure you head over there to see who that person is. It's very exciting. All right, everybody. Well, bright blessings to you as you do this powerful work of owning your sex and your sexuality in the world, of finding that confidence and that peace and that deep connection with yourself or with a partner. Um, I hope my intention for you truly is that you find a way to have the kind of love for yourself that you feel for others, to have the kind of deep appreciation and respect for yourself that you offer others. And remember that Sex is not just something that you do for pleasure. To me, sex is the root of everything. It's the root of everything. So if you need to be more successful, if you want to feel more powerful, if you want to feel happier, if you want to raise your mood, all those things, confidence that people come to me for, health, get in touch with that divine feminine essence. Get in touch with that divine masculine essence. Get more deeply connected to your own sexuality. I promise you it will heal you. Um, and we'll talk more about that. But if you'd like to read more, head over to the blog. I think you'll really enjoy that blog post on the energetic principles of sex. And we'll put a link to that in the full moon group too. All right. Well, cheers, everyone. Thank you for being very brave with me tonight to talk about sex. It can be very scary. So cheers to everyone in the room who has wine. And cheers to those of you who are online. Thank you for being here with me. I will see you in four weeks, just about four weeks from tonight. Enjoy the full moon. Get your stones out under her. Let her light infuse those stones with her energy. She's a beautiful Leo moon tonight, so enjoy that one with your beloved too. Could spark all kinds of fun for you this evening. And I'll see you very soon. Bye everybody. Cheers. Take good care.